Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Unleashing Potentials podcast. So joining me today is Sarah McCready in Canada, in Ontario. How are you? Hi, good morning. Good afternoon. I am doing wonderful, Bernadette. Thank you so much for having me on. Yeah, you're welcome. It's so nice to connect with Canadians. I got so excited. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I've interviewed uh, I've interviewed a few Canadians, but lots of uh, different people from all over the yeah. world. Yes, I heard that list. Um, the UK, the US, Canada. <laughs> so exciting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're really connecting with a lot of people all over. So that's a really exciting time when you start meeting people from new places mm -hmm. and different places outside of Canada and making yeah. those connections. Um, mm -hmm. That's what the beauty of this World Wide Web is all about, right? Yes, it is. And social media brings us together. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, um, yeah. Yeah. So Sarah, can you tell us more about you, what you do? Yeah, absolutely. I am an intuitive mentor and a toxic relationship recovery specialist. So I work with people who have experienced a toxic relationship, whether it's through uh, intimate and romantic or family or at work, however that relationship showed up for you, I help coach um, people who have experienced that style of relationship to move past the trauma and the drama and the grief and the betrayal and really step into their peace, clarity, and experiencing joy again. And I do that through my one-to-one -one mentorship program. And yeah, that's, that's what I'm doing these days, but that's not how it all started. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's awesome. How did it start? <laughs> yeah. Um, I actually was in corporate for a really long time for about 20 years. And I had um, experienced my fourth and final toxic relationship. Um, I've experienced four of them over a 25 year period of my life, in addition to uh, toxic work environments. And it was through my emotional recovery journey of from the fourth and final relationship that I was really called to um, share the healing properties and the healing power, the transformational powers of energy healing and spiritual spirituality and the spiritual concepts. And it um, was going to be an in-person practice or service that I was offering. And I quit my corporate job in January of 2020. <laughs> and I was going to open the doors to a home-based business in um, March or April of 2020. And then with the global pandemic shutting everything down, it um, became clear that there was a new path and a new direction that I was going to be taking. And that involved social media and connecting with people all over the world and um, discovering that there was really a need for this mentorship, this coaching um, style of program versus a single session of energy healing or, you know, the other modalities that I practice. So I moved my business online sometime in 21, I believe. Yeah, probably like spring of 21. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, I, I, I love that you're talking about your experience at the work that you used to do as being toxic, because so many yeah. of us, we, we feel the signs, we sort of see the red flags that things are spiraling down our yeah. health, mental health, and physical body, but we don't always know or we can't always mm. put a name or label to what toxic is. Yeah. Can you help yeah. us understand in, in your perspective what was toxic for you at your job and how was it impacting you overall? Mm. Mm -hmm. um, what I noticed, and it's more um, hindsight being, you know, 2020, you have a 2020 vision after the experience. But 
the pattern that was reoccurring for me uh, through my personal relationships, as well as in my jobs was the lack of boundaries that I was having personally. So spending um, hours like, you know, working 10, 11, 12 hour days, not really setting a hard start and stop time, um, letting the work be all consuming and really um, not valuing my energy and my time. So basically you ended up giving it all away and not having it reciprocated. So you're not being compensated when you're working more than eight hours at a time, you're generally not being compensated for that extra time. And so just really um, seeing how I was not honoring myself in hindsight and recognizing that um, that there was an accountability factor there that I had to take responsibility for the fact that I was not setting those boundaries for myself. And that's really, you know, part of the toxic dynamic is when we are not advocating for ourselves. So although the work was piling up and never ending, and there was, you know, this sense of always doing more, what we call the hustle culture, and I was fully embedded in that, um, there's also that portion that we have to take accountability for that we have to start saying no, not today and setting start and stop times so that we are honoring our energy and valuing our time. And so one of the conclusions that I came to was the employer is always going to ask for more, but that doesn't mean that I have to give more. Mm -hmm. So learning to say no, not today was a really big lesson um, in both my professional and personal life. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that. I'm a sucker for boundaries. And it wasn't yeah. always that way. Unfortunately, most of us do struggle with that yeah. um, because we don't want to hurt people's feelings. We want them to uh, sometimes validate that we are good for them or the environment that they're in. And yes just wanting to blend in and to sort of fit in not in yeah. a necessarily a negative way because if, if we're doing a specific job we want to show that we're passionate about it yeah but over time the passion is killed with exhaustion which is what i'm hearing or explaining yeah. in your story yeah. yeah the the burnout um the burnout rate is so high today for so many people mm -hmm. and um that stress is just compounded. You know, we all suffered a collective trauma over the last three years. And when you've got that happening, you know, kind of running in the background, in addition to the stress that you're experiencing through your employment, it can really have a detrimental impact on your mental, emotional, and physical bodies, as well as your spiritual bodies. And yeah, learning how to advocate for yourself using boundaries was a major, major life lesson for me. That was kind of the piece of the puzzle that had been missing for a very, very long time because of, as you were saying, Bernadette, that need to perform. Um, so to receive that um, validation through my performance, through, you know, the work that I did through showing up and putting in the time and putting in the effort. Um, yeah, and a little bit of people pleasing in there as well, of course. So when you've got that combination of um, being rewarded for performance, and needing to please people to receive validation for yourself, then it's a little bit of a yeah toxic mess right there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I love your fresh energy and perspective on it and your bravery to um, bring it up and to realize that yeah. that's what you were doing because yeah. you're not alone. I've done that in the past. Sometimes I have to catch myself even 
now with what I'm doing. Wait, did I say this to get this person's attention? And if I did that, I normally pull back yeah. and open up again and try again to show people this is coming from my heart versus my environment to please. Yeah. Yes. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a, a big um, lesson. Once you've recognized uh, where you're giving your energy away, where you're seeking validation outside of yourself, um, when you are in a service-based business, it's really, really important to have those checkpoints with yourself to be checking in and making sure, like you said, you're coming from that place of personal power and you're not looking for admiration or accolades or affirmations or validation mm -hmm. externally. So always checking in um, with self to ensure that that um, motivation is coming from that place of power and from that place of um, certainty. So, you know, you're certain of who you are, you're certain of what you're saying and what you're doing. And um, you're not expecting anything in return. And when you're in that place of certainty, which is really about having those boundaries and holding those boundaries, your delivery is so much different. You show up so much more different. You're definitely far more empowered um, and yeah, how you speak becomes different as well, because you're speaking from that place of personal empowerment, not from that kind of, uh, lack mentality or that, uh, seeking approval mentality. Uh, it does make a huge difference and checking ourselves when we find we're feeling a little bit funny or, um, you're receiving something and you're like, wait a minute, that doesn't feel right. It feels off. Yeah, I noticed that. I think it, I plugged in my internet uh, socket to it just in case. So it doesn't happen again. Yeah. Uh, sorry, continue. Okay, Good. yeah. So we were just talking about, um, sorry, are we recording? Yes, we are. We were just talking about um, uh, really checking ourselves if we feel like, you know, something that we're receiving, either words or an experience are feeling a little bit off for us to do the internal check first, to ensure that we actually are coming from place of boundaries that we are not, you know, trying to be needy and seeking approval in some way, shape or form. And so, yeah, that's an on, once you start using your boundaries, that becomes a regular habit, if you will, a regular part of executing strong boundaries is doing that internal check and checking in with yourself to see, well, where was I coming from? How was I showing up? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love that. Um, we're going to touch a little bit about boundaries and relationship. But yeah. before we do that, can you tell us, obviously, the words are understandable, but what you do as a toxic relationship recovery specialist. Yeah. So um, I have a program that has been created through um, spirit source guide um, that was downloaded to me. And a huge component of the work that I do is around spirituality and um learning about your energy, because when we can master our energy, we can manage our emotions, it helps us show up completely differently. It helps us um, heal the past wounds, it helps us break energetic ties, or connections um, to the past. And it helps us create this path forward, that we wouldn't necessarily get through um, our physical world. So it really helps to do that deep healing and um, really releasing any of that baggage and the betrayal and the lower vibe energy that comes from being inside a emotionally abusive or verbally abusive relationship. It helps to process that experience and release it 
and create the new way of being and living. Because when you've been through a toxic relationship, um, there is trauma that has been, that has occurred and it's really healing that trauma. And when you've gone through that experience, you do not come out of it as the same person that you went into the experience, uh, into the relationship. So it's really about um, creating your new identity and stepping into your new identity. And that includes uh, learning about boundaries and how to use boundaries. It, like I said, involves learning about your energy and your energetic body and how much it really impacts your physical world. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, just learning to use those spiritual concepts and those energetic tools in your everyday life to support like that new way of being and new way of doing. So it's also some mindset work, clearing the old beliefs and programming that we have and stepping out of that codependent way of being those codependent patterns of behavior and learning to live from an independent and interdependent way of being. So being able to um, ha have your own say, have your own life and still be in relationship without that um, neediness and, you know, those codependent behaviors that can be so present um, when we haven't learned how to really hold our boundaries and um, when we're not learning to be uh, validating ourselves first and seeking, you know, our own counsel first. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's kind of like the, the broad <laughs> overview of the work that, that I do with my clients. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. I love that. I love that you do your work with um, spiritual aspect to it. Like yeah. it's not a churchy type of spiritual. I understand yeah. the type of spiritual that you're talking about. Yeah. Um, yeah. You it's brought all about the energy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> just really writing down some key words. Uh, you mentioned uh, trauma, wounds, um, yeah. programming, um, yeah. and so many other words. But we, we have been programmed uh, even before we were born, it feels like. Um, what are some common uh, toxic patterns that you're noticing uh, mm. with the work that you're doing? Yeah, so one of the key observations that I've had um, from my own personal experience and with my clients is, as you were saying, that programming is embedded. It is generational. It's mm -hmm. our mothers, our grandmothers, our great grandmothers. It's seven generations back. And so this is really, as you said, a program that you're born with, a belief system, mm -hmm. uh, ways of being and doing that are just kind of passed on generation after generation and potentially in this lifetime and other lifetimes. Mm -hmm. And so when I uh, work with my clients, we approach it from the energetic world, clearing the energy, healing the energy, healing the trauma. Mm -hmm. um, it is the program of being attracted to what's familiar. So we end up in relationship with um, the energy that feels familiar, not necessarily what is healthy for us mm -hmm. because that programming is so ingrained. And so it's learning to be unattracted to that unhealthy, toxic energy. So again, that codependency, that need for people pleasing, um, the need for validation and approval outside of yourself, not really knowing your full worth. Mm -hmm. One of the other things that has um, come forward for me is that um, through working with my clients is that confidence does not equate to worthiness or self-worth. So you can be highly confident in your world, in your business, in your relationships, but that doesn't mean that you totally value yourself or know your full worth. There's usually a gap there between the confidence and the self-worth 
that has contributed to being inside of a toxic relationship. So um, when we work together, we're also working through building up the self-worth, creating that foundation. So breaking the ties of, um, you know, that toxic energy being, you know, attracted to that toxic energy. So shifting the focus and moving into, um, again, the words that I was using before, that independence and interdependence way of thinking and being, and then also totally knowing your worth mm -hmm. in your mind, in your heart, in your body, and your, in your soul without mm -hmm. a reasonable doubt. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty powerful work. Wow. Um, I, I can tell that you'd be able to help me and many other people like you're helping because um, in, in my case, I would say it's programming, obviously different, yeah. coming from a different country to another culture but mm. when it comes to generational trauma, I wish I could just give it back to them. I don't want it. Keep it. Yeah. <laughs> but it doesn't always work that way. It doesn't always work that way at all. Um, no. Yeah. With what you just mentioned, I was going to ask you, what is an intuitive mentor? Yeah. So I, um, I work with spirit. I work with universe source creator. And um, when we are in relation, so when we are working together, when we are in mentorship, um, I read your energy, I tap into your energy, and we're able to, um, Spirit and I source, uh, we're able to really pinpoint the area that you need to focus your time and energy on of like, shedding those layers and really doing the deep dive. So it is through the intuitiveness or the channeling or the reading, whatever uh, resonates with you, mm -hmm. that I get information to share with you to help you on your emotional recovery journey, because we're able to pinpoint a few specific um, incidences or experiences that need to be healed in order for you to fully step into this um, independent and interdependent way of living and being so breaking the programming mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just thinking oh crap I hope she's not reading me <laughs> 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 like oh no oh no yeah um, you see, <laughs> when you're looking at me do you see anything yeah. you don't have to do a full reading that's just an example yeah. So, um, first of all, we all have free will and, um, yeah. I am extremely respectful of that. And so, <laughs> no, I don't go around reading people without permission. Mm -hmm. Um, but yes, I can, I don't, I don't see auras per se the way some people do. Um, it's more, uh, for me, it's more clear sentience and uh, clear cognizance and um, clear audience. So I'll receive little messages, little words, little snippets. Um, sometimes it's images. I will feel the client um, so I can feel their energy. Um, and then it's a general sense of the energy. So of course, yes, like when we came on the screen, there was like this beautiful glow with you and your energy is very peaceful. And I know your mission because we were chatting, but even before we were chatting this morning, I mean, it's very obvious that you want to do good in the world and that you are um, focusing on bringing that into the world to help elevate and to lighten, yes, the energy, the frequency here on earth if you will <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah you get, yeah. You're right. yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah um what is a ricky master is it also blend in with intuition yeah so Reiki is an energy healing modality that um i received when i was going through my emotional recovery journey it um was you know, one of those coincidences, but I don't believe in coincidences. So someone had recommended or referred 
a practitioner to me to begin to receive Reiki. I'd never had it before. I knew of it, but I wasn't really aware of it. And so this was my introduction into um, a higher level of spirituality. It is a very ancient um, energy healing modality that's been around for thousands of years. And um there are different levels that you go through as you are becoming more and more practiced. So uh, I actually became teacher certified at the end of March this year. So I now am teaching Reiki, but it is a form of energy healing. It is um, helps you balance your energetic body. And as I shared earlier, um, I believe strongly in the connection between our mind, body, and soul. And as I've learned and healed my energetic body and seen how much it transforms the physical world that I live in and my physical body, um, it's it's like undeniable the, the power of transformation that comes from, from Reiki. So Reiki Master is a level. Like I said, there's three or four levels altogether. And moving up to teacher. And so um, each level has a different um, set of tools that it comes with. So yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what that means. And this is, yeah, this was the main platform for me stepping into the work that I'm doing today was learning Reiki, and then um, using that in my business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really cool how how do people use reiki how do you use is it that like a hand healing energy I, i've yeah. heard of it you just describe it give me a scenario yeah. if i were to yeah ask so we're basically working on your aura or your energetic body oh. and and the chakra system so there's like seven main chakras and reiki is really about um, clearing the chakras and bringing in the higher, lighter vibrational energy or frequencies. And that's done through the practitioner or the person uh, channeling in the higher, lighter energies. So you go, um, it's almost like you go as a practitioner, you go into a meditative state and you bring in this super high frequency and your uh, yes, through your hands, um, okay. but you you can do it without your hands as well. <laughs> but <laughs> generally, yes, you, you can place your hands over someone's body and and um, transmit the higher frequency. So you're clearing their chakra system and bringing in higher frequencies and vibrations that literally you feel lighter, like you feel like you're floating and you physically feel lighter after an energy healing or a Reiki session. So yeah, it's super really cool. powerful. Yeah. Yes. But yeah. as I was just saying, it can be done uh, remotely. You don't have to be in person. Um, I do my work over Zoom. Um, I've done it with no technology at all. So we just agree on a time and a day. And um, I guess basically it's like telepathically sending yeah. healing. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's really yeah. Cool. Yeah, really, yeah. Really cool. Yeah. 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 The chakras I were the first things that I learned about because I got a book on, on chakras when my spiritual awakening first started. Yes. And she was just giving example of like how to feel the, the chakras to do this. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I, I feel it. Uh, because yeah. I'm, I, I mean, I'm still wrapping my head around spirits, energy, things that are there I can't see. Uh, That's but right. Over yeah. time, over time, I'm learning. Yeah, that's why we call it a practice, right? It's not something that happens all at once. You do something a little bit every day to learn, to experience, to explore. And uh, it's exciting and it's fun and it doesn't feel like um, drudgery or, you know, <laughs> heaviness. It's, it's um, such an amazing journey to go on. And it really is what helps lighten 
the load when you are on an emotional recovery journey. So another expression that I use for the emotional recovery journey is that dark night of the soul. And the dark night of the soul is what we talk about when we're having a spiritual awakening and coming through a toxic relationship, healing from a toxic relationship truly is um, that dark night of the soul. You are moving through old ways of being and doing, you're shedding, you're releasing, and you're stepping into your new identity, your new patterns, your new programming, and your new ways of being and doing. And when you work with energy work, when you work with the spiritual concepts, it literally lightens the load. Reiki will help um, bring in the awarenesses. You have like epiphanies and ahas, and you start to piece together your relationship experience, your toxic relationship experience. And you're also able to process it. Doing the energy healing work helps you process those heavier energies or heavier emotions more easily. So it's not such a gut-wrenching journey like it can be. And I have experienced it both ways. The first three toxic relationships I um, moved out of, I didn't even know about energy healing at that time in my life. And so they were very much a gut-wrenching grieving experience. And I knew that when I was going through um, the ending of this fourth and final toxic relationship that I didn't want to experience it the way I did the previous three. And that's how energy healing and Reiki ended up coming into my world because, um, you know, when you ask the universe will answer. And so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah that's and so, so cool. it really allowed for that healing to happen quickly and gently. And that's what I was calling in. I was calling in that this healing happened quickly and gently and that it, although it is still a grief journey and it very much was a dark night of the soul, it was not the same way as what I had experienced the previous three times. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy for you. It was gentle. <laughs> yeah. Mine was more like a whiplash. <laughs> yes, that's um, what it was yeah. like before. Yes, that's a great way to yeah. describe it. Yeah, yeah. and it's, it's gut-wrenching and it is, yes. Mm -hmm. um, you never see it coming and it literally turns your world upside down. And yeah. so having experienced that on four separate occasions, and then finally learning and understanding what was really happening underneath all of that is what propelled me to create my program and never wanting anyone to go through that alone, mm -hmm. <laughs> that there is support, there is someone who knows what that experience is like, and that can help walk you through it quickly and gently <laughs> yeah yeah um i think we have this in common when when it comes to how we experience the first um spiritual encounters or healing i, I love that you tie a relationship to it because that's what caused uh my awakening to start yeah i was meditating and then my third eye opened didn't know what it was almost had a heart attack I asked yeah. her and she told me that that's what it was. I, you know, when they say, don't, don't, don't look at the light. Maybe yeah. I don't die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought that, I'm like, what's going on? And the dark night of the soul, it's not for yeah. the faint of heart. It is and not. It was terrible. I, yeah. I have, uh, I wrote it down every single thing I experienced. It's Amazing. like I was in hell and heaven at the same time. I was yeah. so paranoid. I was hot and I was cold and yeah. I was hearing whispers and I felt things. It yeah. felt like a war zone. So yes. You can describe it. It was terrifying and thrilling. Yes. Yeah. That pretty much sums it up. <laughs> yeah. And so going through that alone, as you've experienced, um, is, you know, Although you have stepped into wisdom and you have an unforgettable experience that is going to shape and transform the rest of your days here on earth, 
Um, it doesn't need to be done alone. There is so much more comfort when you've got someone who has experienced and um, experienced that and can walk with you through that journey because um, there's so many things that happen as you were describing all at the same time. And to have all those questions and not have any answers, it just, yeah, really um, makes it even heavier than it needs to be. Yeah. 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 And yeah. once my third eye was open, it felt like I, I was having open brain surgery and whiplashing. Like it, my eyes at the back, my head, it hurt so bad. And I was so yeah. tired. Yeah. Yes. Right. No one should go through that alone, especially well, if they don't know what's a, going on. Well, and most people don't. Um, a lot of my clients, they have already started to experience um, some awakening symptoms or signs. And so... <laughs> That's how we end up working together is they end up finding me um, because they're seeing me talk about spirituality and the concepts and, and, and I'm sharing lessons, but it's because of the toxic relationship or the trauma from the toxic relationship that they end up going down this path of, yeah, the great awakening. <laughs> yeah. I wish everyone could experience it and never experience it again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, that brings me to a very good question. Mm. Well, tell me more about your, your, your company or what you're doing. Illuminate, yeah. Illuminated oh. Joy, correct? Yeah, that's I right. That. Yeah, thank you. Um, I get a lot of amazing positive feedback on the name of the business. And it came about because uh, in the early days when I was going to be doing an in-person service or so I thought I have a light system that um, you have to be in person to use and I thought that was going to be part of my business and so I had had some clients and one of them had put me in her contacts as um, lights and joy <laughs> And so when I was uh, trying to decipher what the business name was going to be, Illuminated Joy is what had come through for me. And yeah, it has stuck very much so because of all the amazing positive feedback. So I, as I said, I'm an intuitive mentor now. And um, I work with people who have experienced those toxic relationships through the mentorship program. I also do online meditations, and so I provide um, Reiki-infused guided meditations. And um, what else do I do these days? I think that's pretty much it. Those are, yeah, the, the main services that I provide at this time. Yeah, uh, I think you do one more thing. What is the PATH Mentorship Program? It's tied to your... Yeah, yeah, so that's the name of the mentorship program uh, is the path. Yeah, Illuminated Path is what I've named the uh, mentorship program. It was um, a different name until about three weeks ago. So I've just renamed it to Illuminated Path. Wow, was it? Yeah, it's a, it was called Evolution Path Mentorship Program. Oh, Yes. Okay. And that name wasn't really resonating as much as illuminated path. So it has a similar name to the business name. The word path has definitely stuck for the mentorship program, um, because that is what we're going on. As I've said, this journey, it is totally a path. It's a windy path. It is not straight. <laughs> We zig and we zag and we go on quite the journey together. And yeah, so it's a six month program and yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. That's really, really cool. So do you work just with women or do you help men, families? Mm -hmm. do you um, primarily with women, but I have worked with men as well. So yeah. It's um, who, whoever is called to work with me and vice versa. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, 
that's it's it's open to whoever at this point in time um but primarily if you've experienced the toxic relationship either through family through an intimate or romantic uh, partnership um or through work mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm just soaking it all in because i've experienced all the so above many. oh my <laughs> god so yeah. many so many yes that's what yeah traumatized me and started yeah. us uh, a, a spiritual awakening i think most of does. us have experienced that we we just don't yeah. know um how to start healing from that family right. relationship is it's messy if i could yeah. walk the opposite way avoid it i would but i can't it's something yes. i have to go through what would you say to any of us who's struggling with any types of toxic relationships mm. um learning about your energetic body and your boundaries. When you learn to master your energy, you are able to manage your emotions in a way that you never thought was possible. You are able to become um, responsive and not reactionary because you're able to deflect that energy that is coming from the toxic people in your lives. And um, it creates this completely empowered way of being. And then learning about your boundaries is absolutely key, but you can learn about your energetic boundaries as well, which is a really cool approach that I use inside the mentorship program is we start with learning about energetic boundaries first before we step into really understanding our physical boundaries. So um, when we learn to master our energetic world, we have so much more control over everything else in our lives. So that's what I would say to that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's a really good answer. Um, let's say someone doesn't know what energies are, mm -hmm. or they don't know anything we just talked about. <laughs> yeah. How would you uh, explain to them how to feel their energy and work with it? Yes. Um, starting to get quiet. The first place to begin to feel your energy is really getting quiet. And um, being in nature is a perfect way. Uh, all the teachers talk about that. All the spiritual teachers talk about that. And the reason being is because you can literally feel when you're in the forest, when you're on a wooded path or trail, um, when you can just sit and be quiet, you can sense the energy around you because everything is energy and we are all energy. And when you're in nature, it's magnified. So it's a really great place to start. And then just as you were doing, Bernadette, just even starting to rub your hands and begin to... Mm -hmm. start sensing that energetic ball the energy ball playing with that yeah those are the two places that I always recommend to start at least sensing it and I have a lot of conversations with my clients about um yeah the beginning stages of that how do you start to work with your energy when you haven't even experienced it before. And so generally, um, we have a Reiki session. And that is really the beginning point, because you feel it in a Reiki session. And then once you've made that connection, you're like, Oh, this is what everyone's talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, there are so many other examples, I would say, uh, with toxic energy feeling. Uh, someone mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily have to be an empath. Here's an example most people experience, uh, a rude text and how it makes you feel inside walking into a room yeah. and you see someone you don't like, you, you, yeah. you just can feel it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. The, you, uh, the energy in the room, if you've walked into a room and there's been an argument and it, you walk in the space and you're like, oh, it feels weird in here. It feels heavy in here. Those are all examples of you sensing energy. Yeah. Or if you feel like people have been talking about you, if you walk in the room and all of a sudden everybody's quiet, <laughs> there's yeah, definitely, yeah. you know, what you're sensing is accurate. There has been something that has transpired there energetically. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought I would put that in there because for me, when I was first learning about energy, maybe for other people, mm. it felt like it was out of reach or it was magical too real to be yes. true. And I couldn't really tap or understand what it was. And yes. those are the examples that were given to me. I'm like, okay, yeah. I get it. I get yes. it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I like to talk about normalizing the woo um, for that very reason. What you just said, it is not magical. It is not out of reach or out of your touch. It really is just, um, beginning to explore and have someone explain it to you in uh, terms that we can wrap our heads around, not like concepts that are so far reaching that you don't even know what somebody's saying. Yeah. 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 yeah you're right. Uh, so where can people find you if they would like to work with you? Yeah. So um, I hang out on Instagram primarily. That's my main platform at illuminated joy all one word um, and i would love to invite any of the female listeners to my facebook group it is healing thriving and evolving but it's healing thriving evolving um and so yeah i would love to have them come in it's a community that i'm building uh, where i share this kind of conversation and um, yeah, welcome them in. And then of course the website is illuminatedjoy.com, all one word. Mm -hmm. Awesome. What an incredible conversation this was. Uh, before I let you go, do you have any final thoughts that you would like to leave us with? Um, don't be afraid to explore. Mm -hmm. Really, um, I love what you just said, Bernadette, about um, the concepts being so far out there. Mm -hmm. Finding a teacher or a mentor or even, um, you know, a teacher on YouTube or wherever, but find someone that you resonate with and begin to take steps to learn about those concepts. Because when you do, your entire world will literally be transformed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe you. Well, Sarah, thank you so much for your time. Uh, thank you for everything you're doing and for sharing your gifts with me and my listeners. Yes, thank you, Bernadette. I've enjoyed this conversation and I appreciate you so much. Thank you so much.